The basic needs of any human is food, clothing, and shelter. But according to global homelessness, over 24.4 million people remain homeless in Nigeria. This is not right. For me to reach office by that six, eh, I must come out house by four. I never dreamt of me ever staying somewhere like this. Homeless, the documentary, is the part one of many series that mirrors the pressing issues of the homeless in the FCT and Nigeria. The room here is very, 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 very small. They don't tip my bag, my assets, and money. We release the first of many series of Homeless, the documentary. They don't even try to me shout. Plenty, plenty time. By Swat Dunya and Wale Ojo, 4th of May. The room here is very, 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 very small. Uh, when I reach office, around uh, that 4 30 for morning, I they go sleep for one uh, bus stop like that till like around 6. Who is a homeless person? The definition of those who are experiencing homelessness includes an individual or family who lacks a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence such as those living in emergency shelters, transitional housing or places not meant for habitation, or unaccompanied youth under 25 years of age or families with children and youth who qualify under other federal status such as the Runaway and Homeless Youth Act have not had a lease or ownership interest in a housing unit in the last 60 days or more, who have had two or more moves in the last 60 days, and who are likely to continue to be unstably housed because of disability or multiple barriers to employment, or an individual or family who is fleeing or attempting to flee domestic violence, has no other residence, and lacks the resource or support network to obtain other permanent housing. Who is at risk of homelessness? The definition of those who are at risk of homelessness includes individuals and families who, one, have an annual income below 30% of median family income for the area. Unfortunately, we do not know who determines this parameter in Nigeria, which is the area in question. Two, do not have sufficient resources or support networks immediately available to prevent them from moving to an emergency shelter or place not meant for habitation. And three, exhibit one or more risk factors of homelessness, including recent housing instability, or exiting a publicly funded institution or system of care such as a foster care or a mental health facility. Why are people homeless? Basically because of housing. But first, let's look at how much of a problem housing in Nigeria is. According to Global Homelessness Statistics on homelessworldcup.org, there are an estimated 24.4 million homeless people in Nigeria. This is a consequence of many factors, including rapid urbanization poverty, according to a UNHCR report in 2007, and actions by Boko Haram. In 2018, 613,000 people were displaced due to natural disasters and a further 541,000 due to violence and conflict. This will be a two-part documentary, but on this part, we will be taking a look at real-life scenarios of how people become genuinely homeless, even within the highbrow areas of the FCT, Abuja. There are three types of homelessness, chronic, transitional, and episodic. For the purpose of this documentary, we will focus on only one, which is transitional homelessness. A person or family suffering from transitional homelessness would have the following characteristics. According to Social Security Administration program, an individual with no permanent living arrangement, that is, no fixed place of residence, is considered homeless or transient. Someone who is transient is neither a member of a household nor a resident of an institution. For example, someone who sleeps in doorways, overnight shelters, parks, 
bus stations, etc. A person who stays with a succession of friends or relatives and has no permanent living arrangements on the first moment of the month. Let's go and find out if we actually have people like that around us. My name is Balogun Joseph. Well, some of us living because of the situation we found ourselves. Somebody like me now, this is the hardest life I'm living. This is the hardest part of my life. I never dreamt of me ever staying somewhere like this. But you know, when you, when you meet yourself, you have to take a letter and have to push so I can go somewhere better. Living here is not easy, actually. Some of us have to do hard labor. If I tell you what I do to get paid, you will not know. I go to site, I do very, very hard labor. But that doesn't stop me from chasing my dream. So, but I'm still grateful for where I am now. I'm still grateful for where I'm going to be. So many people are here. There are good people here. There are bad people here too. But it's life. But I know what I'm here. I know I'm not. I'm not planning to stay here longer. If God does what I want, so that's why I just, I'm just staying here for the main time. I believe it's going to be a change as God exists. A huge amount of Abuja's working population come from neighboring states, namely Nasrawa, Niger, Kogi, and Kaduna states. The distance of some of the states makes it sometimes very hectic to travel every morning and evening. For instance, distance between Nasrawa and Abuja is 163 kilometers, which is an equivalent of 101 miles. The driving distance from Kaduna to Abuja is 221 kilometers, which is an equivalent of 138 miles. The total straight line distance between Kefi and Abuja is 58 kilometers. People have, however, found a way around this. Leave the neighboring states early and get to work much earlier. So what do you do when you arrive your place of work, like 5 a.m.? Some sleep in the car, some that have sleeping spaces make use of it, at least till resumption time. Some take shelter under trees, local shops, churches, mosques, and so on. My name is Maudo. We met with Madam Udo. She's an example of what it means to be a transient homeless person living in Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory. I they live for Yanya and I they work for Central Area. I be cleaner and um, I don't they do this cleaner work for the past 20 years. I be grandma and it's not easy to they live for Yanya and to they work for Central Area. My office they open around the uh, that kind of six. So I must resume by six for early momo. For me to reach office by that six, eh, I must come out house by four. So I no go jam, go slow for that uh, AYA, uh, be Nyanya Road, that AYA Nyanya Road. Every time where they come out house for that four o'clock, road, they free. I they free reach office by 4.30. But anything will make me come out for house around five. Hey, now around nine, no, till I reach office. <laughs> and, uh, you know, say, work, <laughs> you know, they are side. And I get children and grandchildren. Where they feed? Uh, when I reach office around uh, that four thirty for morning, I they go sleep for one uh, bus stop like that. See, like around six, when they go open uh, my gate office, I don't even get friends or family for that central area side. Now why me? I they sleep for that bus stop. Ah, uh, plenty, plenty times they don't thief my bag. My answer and money as I they sleep for that bus stop. They devil try to rape me, shall <laughs> But I don't they sleep with stick. <laughs> My own still better pass some people. People where they come from that cafe side. Uh, those ones, they, they come out house for like around the 3 a.m. for morning. And those ones, they devil sleep for their moto. <laughs> I don't even know which one better pass. Me when they even get moto. <laughs> As it don't be say, plenty of us, when they live outside Abuja, don't they walk inside Abuja? Me, I for just say, make government create one small house. Maybe go just pay chicken money as rent 
we feel they stay there from Monday which Friday. Friday like this, everybody go just go back house, go meet in family. Because it's not good for our health. When we go, they wake up for early mama. We go still come, enter another ghost class with the go us, we go see which house for um, night. It's not good like that. Make government help us do something. Her story is even better when compared to Balogun Joseph, a homeless man who lives in a public shelter. If you're wondering what Joseph meant by a place like this, let him give you a vivid description of where he's staying. You can see the environment. There's no way sleeping is going to be comfortable. The room here is very, 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 very small. Very, 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 very small. And they're still expensive. You can't even put a nail on the wall. Because of this thing, is, they're not even built with even uh, with clay or, uh, or blocks. This thing is done with just mud on the floor. So it's very, 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 very uncomfortable. The wiring, everything is... Life here is very, 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 very risky. And it's hot at night and everything. But we have to stay because we have no choice. And you know, even if it's face defend your, your face again to cause uh, fluid. To cause fluid again. So it's not, it's, not, it's not comfortable at all. It's very, very uncomfortable. But we don't have any choice. Even though Balogun professes to be grateful, the question is, is that the real feeling that most homeless people have? Maybe a sense of despair best describes. Can something be done? Yes, a whole lot will be involved. From town planning to unemployment, adequate infrastructural development, and consideration of climate change dynamics, but most importantly, a political will. In the subsequent episodes of this documentary, we shall be focused more on other types of homelessness. Hit music all day, every day. I see the sweetest, he depend them. I see you pen them, come on, he the sweetest. I demand for your love.